Hi, I'm Sirius XM Patriot 125. And folks, you're listening to Breitbart News tonight. And did you know, Joel, that tomorrow is the beginning of Giving Tuesday? And that is a movement to create an international day of charitable giving at the beginning of the Christmas and holiday season. And to talk about this with us, I want to welcome in our next guest, Commander Jeremy Butler, who is the CEO of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Commander Butler, welcome to Breitbart News tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show. So tell us about how uh, Giving Tuesday, this whole movement, you know, it's an international movement to, to, you know, encourage charitable giving. Tell us what your organization is doing with Giving Tuesday and what we can do to help you. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's one day. It's hopefully a day that folks will uh, realize that there's a lot of organizations out there uh, that need their support. Uh, IAVA, or Afghanistan Veterans of America, is certainly one of them. Uh, what we hope is that uh, folks realize that, you know, it's not just on Giving Tuesday, but really it's 365 days a year where uh, support is needed to help uh, help us with the work that we're doing. What we're specifically focused on is uh, working with members of Congress, the administration, the VA, the Department of Defense, uh, civilians, uh, military members, veterans, everybody really to focus on the issues that are the most important that uh, members of the post-9-11 generation of veterans are struggling with. Uh, the biggest one of those uh, that we see not just within our own community but across the entire veteran spectrum is combating suicide amongst our troops and veterans. That's been an ongoing problem, but there's a number of other issues that we're focused on, everything from reform and uh, oversight of the VA to helping with burn pits and toxic exposures, uh, protecting the GI Bill, uh, increasing our ability to to get access to uh, the medical benefits uh, that our service members and troops have have earned and and are trying to take advantage of uh, when they they hang up the uniform. So there's a whole range of things uh, that we're focused on, but there are issues that uh, are in some cases unique to the post-9-11 generation, but in others are uh, broad across uh, the entire spectrum of veterans community. And so what we would hope to do in the long term is work with Congress to find long-term solutions uh, to fix the problems that our veterans are facing. And with uh, everyone out there's support on Giving Tuesday and other days throughout the year, you know, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, nonpartisan. Uh, we always need as much help and support as we can get from the public. That's right. Now, give our listeners um, the website where how they can find you to, to uh, donate. Yeah, I appreciate it. You can go to IAVA.org. That's Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, IAVA.org. Uh, everyone is eligible to sign up to become a member. It's free. We'll keep you informed about what's going on. Uh, and there's very clearly a nice red donate button on there. Uh, we're certainly looking for anyone's help as well. Uh, but you can do both. And frankly, that's what we're looking for. It's not just for veterans, it's not just for military members. Anyone who's interested in supporting our veteran community can sign up for free, become a member. We'll keep you informed of what's going on. We'll keep you informed about the issues that veterans are dealing with today. And we'll give you ways in which you can help. Uh, and we'll certainly uh, give you an opportunity to donate if that's, if that's available to you. But at a minimum, what we'd love for you to do is to go to the website, iava.org, uh, sign up to become a member. Uh, again, it's free. Uh, and we'll keep you informed about what's going on. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, uh, this is something that's n- really near and dear to our hearts here at Breitbart.com. Uh, our founder, Andrew Breitbart, was a huge supporter of our troops um, and, uh, you know, always uh, participated in Troopathon every year and um, had a big heart for what uh, our men and women in the military have to go through, and especially what they go through when they come home, too. Uh, as you mentioned, there's so many challenges that um, – that they face, uh, you know, the PTSD rate, suicide rate, it's just a, it's really, it's a, 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 a national shame that we have, you know, uh, suicide rates that this high among our vets. Um, what resources uh, do you give or do you, do you provide for vets who, you know, need help, um, Commander Butler? Where do you send vets? Yeah, no, I mean, the biggest thing that we try and uh, talk about is the need for uh, veterans and service members to have a place to turn when they need help. And the reality is the closest person is those around them. Uh, so the best case scenario uh, is that anyone that's struggling and looking for help is going to have a friend, a loved one, a battle buddy, someone
someone that they can turn to and say, hey, I'm struggling and I need some help. That's always the hardest thing to do is to admit that you've got uh, maybe some things that you're struggling with and then to ask someone for help. Then the problem is, as you're getting that, what do you do at that point? You know, if you're the person that someone has turned to, uh, you need to be compassionate, you need to be respectful, you need to stay with that person, you need to make sure they get the help they need. And that's where, unfortunately, we often have run into some uh, difficult issues. Um, and that's because we just have a lack of easy access uh, to to support for what our veterans and support and, and service members are going through today. So one of the easy ones is the Veterans Crisis Line. Uh, that's if you're really in an emergency, if you're uh, at a threat, if someone's uh, possibly thinking about harming themselves, uh, potentially uh, seem to be suicidal, you can reach out and call the Veterans Crisis Line. But we also at IAVA also have a way that uh, you can connect with us directly for support. Again, if you go to IAVA.org, uh, you're going to see an opportunity to click on uh, our Get Support um, button, and that can give you a phone number so that you can call and get connected uh, to help uh, with resources that you need. We'll also have numbers on there, like I said, for the Veterans Crisis Line uh, and things like that so that you have a way uh, to reach out. But that's one of the areas that we are specifically trying to provide support to veterans, uh, but more needs to be done. We're not always going to be there. We can't help everybody. So what we're fighting for uh, on Congress uh, with working with the Department of Defense, the VA, uh, the administration is to get more access to mental health services uh, to our veterans and to our military members. And so that's free resources they can get through the VA. It's local resources that they can get if they're not connected to the VA or maybe they have a less than honorable discharge, uh, oftentimes caused by issues dealing with PTSD, so that if that's the case, uh, they can reach out to some uh, non-governmental or some state or local organizations uh, in their areas as well. Because the bottom line is there's just not enough resources available uh, to meet our veterans' needs. So we're trying to help out uh, by filling some of the gap with IVA's rapid response referral program, uh, but then we're also working hard on Capitol Hill uh, to make sure that there are more programs available out there uh, for anyone that needs help, not just veterans and military members, but frankly, everyone in society. We have a, a suicide issue within this country that is really just has unmet issues. And um, if we're going to solve it, we really got to make sure that everyone has an ability and, an, and a uh, comfort in admitting that they need help and then knowing where to turn when, when they're ready to get some help. You know, it's a great point. And i got to ask you, uh, one of the things that President Trump ran on in 2016 is, is fixing the VA, is putting our veterans first. Um, just an honest assessment of how he's done so far. How do you feel, Commander Butler, that he's done? Has he done enough? Can we do more? Obviously we can do more, but uh, has, has any progress been had on this issue? Has been made. Yeah, I mean, and unfortunately, you were right in saying we can always do more, and that's the that's the bottom line. Is uh, the VA is a massive bureaucracy, for lack of a better word. You know, it's the second largest department within our federal government. So there's always going to be fixes that need to be made. We have uh, thousands of under uh, filled, or excuse me, unfilled uh, vacancies, especially within the medical programs. Uh, we've got crumbling infrastructure in a lot of the VA hospitals and uh, areas like that. That said, some progress is being made. Uh, you know, the, the Mission Act, uh, which we could talk along about that, uh, has been an opportunity uh, bipartisan bill that was passed to uh, help fix uh, the issue of the VA wait, wait, um, wait line uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait list. Excuse me. Uh, you know, it's it's an early start to that. It just was implemented in June, uh, so we're going to need, need some more time to see how effective that is to make sure that uh, veterans aren't waiting too long to get the help that they need. That's been one uh, step in the right direction. The Whistleblower Act uh, to make sure that we have an ability to get rid of bad VA employees uh, when they do exist. Uh, there's certainly uh, the vast majority of VA employees that are good and dedicated individuals, but when we do have someone that is uh, found to not be really working in veterans' best interest, we need to make sure that there's an ability to get rid of them. So that uh, bill that was passed and signed into law is a good thing. Um, and then most recently uh, was the, the President and the Administration's Prevents Act, uh, which is focused on the suicide issue that we just talked about. Uh, it's still got a few more months before they're going to release uh, some of their findings and some of the ways ahead, but I'm hoping uh, that they're moving as quickly as possible on that because we are, uh, you know, we're losing service members every single day and we're losing veterans every single day. So there are some event steps being made in the right direction, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. We're supportive of legislation uh, that's in the House and the Senate uh, that's going to increase uh, the ability 
availability of veterans to get access to VA health care, but then also expand resources that are available to them at the state and local uh, level, as I was mentioning before, where uh, you sometimes don't have access to a VA uh, close to you, or maybe you're not eligible for VA services. We want to make sure that all veterans are getting access to that care that they that they have earned uh, and that they need. So some steps are being made in the in the right direction, but the reality is. This is not a new problem. Uh, It's going to take a lot of work to fix, uh, and these are just some of the areas in which uh, we're going to start making some strides. So we're moving in the right direction, but there's a lot more that needs to be done, unfortunately. Is there any action items that we're dealing with? Yeah. Yeah, Is there any action items that you you would like our listeners to know about, any sort of legislation that you want to, uh, that they should know about, that they should uh, be involved in? Yeah, definitely. So again, we can cover all this at uh, IAVA.org. Our big six are our uh, focal areas uh, for areas in which um, we are most focused on. And the biggest one is definitely the veteran suicide issue. Uh, With that one, the biggest piece of legislation that we're supportive of is called the Commander John Scott Hannon uh, Military Health Mental Health Care Improvement Act. Uh, And Mm -hmm. that's a bill that's in the Senate bipartisan bill uh, that's going to do a lot of the things that we just talked about. So it's going to increase the number of of medical staff that are within the VA. It's going to increase, it's going to set some grants that are made uh, that hopefully the VA uh, or the administration will be responsible for for, uh, implementing uh, to uh, fund programs at the state, local, and regional level uh, to access, uh, to give service members who aren't um, in easy access to the VA and ability to get coverage that they need. Uh, and it's going to do a number of other things. So that's a that sounds huge great. step in the right And direction. you can find yeah, out so. all of this is at IAVA.org, and that's where they can also go to donate um, for to your website uh, to go towards Giving Tuesday, which is tomorrow. You know, we had Cyber Monday today, Giving Tuesday, this charitable, uh, you know, day of, of giving for the holiday season starts tomorrow. And again, uh, our listeners can go to IAVA.org to donate to the Iraq and uh, Afghanistan veterans of America. You know, Commander Butler, I want to thank you so much for joining us um, and, and commend your great work uh, in service to our, our veterans. Uh, you know, uh, everything. To me, the veterans always have to come first, at the head of the line of everything that we do. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, again, uh, for our listeners, it's IAVA.org. Um, you know, it's a, and it's a great tradition, Joel, uh, uh, you know, Giving Tuesday. I love this idea. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, so, yeah, again, folks, IAVA.org, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Like I said, we owe them everything. Let's give a little. Dig deep, folks. This is Joel and Rebecca wishing you all a wonderful evening. Check out Breitbart News daily tomorrow morning with our very own Alex Marlowe. And check out Breitbart.com for all your news. we got some great stories up. Check it, check it out tomorrow. Same place, same time.